Mr. Atkins thingy. Today we're going to talk about the modern notion of the atom. We spend a long time talking about uh, the history of the development, Dalton, yada, 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 Thompson, Kelvin, the plum pudding metal, metal. You sound really silly on tape, don't you? Anyhow, we finally got through Rutherford with the nucleus. Now what this lecture is going to do is we are going to concentrate on what is in that tiny, tiny nucleus. And so there are three parts to the nucleus. The first part <coughs> um, is, I, no, there are not three parts to the nucleus. There are three parts to the atom. So we left off with the idea of having a tiny, tiny little nucleus and then the electron going around and then empty space in between. And what we're going to do today is we're going to zero in on that nucleus and we're going to talk about what it is and what's in there. <clears throat> Turns out that there are two different things inside the nucleus. Uh, the first thing is called a proton. And the protons have a positive charge. Their charge is positive. And they also have a mass. The mass is one. Now we have this special unit that we invent just to weigh protons and neutrons because they're so tiny. Because if you uh, weigh it out in grams, it's like point zero 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 zero, you know, a bunch of zeros, and you don't want to do that. So we invent this unit called the atomic mass unit, AMU for short, atomic mass unit. And that's what a proton weighs. And <clears throat> so protons have a positive one charge, and they weigh one AMU. And so there's another part of the, nu nu <coughs> excuse me, of the nucleus called the neutron. Now, it's real easy to remember what the charge on these things is, because pro, proton, pro, positive. And the neutron, not negative, not negative because uh, that would be negatron or electrons are negative. We've learned that already. But the neutron has no charge. It does not have a charge. It would not interact with a magnetic field. A proton is, would interact with a magnetic field in exactly the opposite way of an electron, where an electron would be attracted to it, a proton would be repelled, and vice versa. Neutrons weigh about 1 AMU as well just slightly, slightly more. They're the, the heaviest part of the atom is the neutron. Very, 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 very slightly heavier, but they weigh about the same as the protons. So if you want to kind of keep track real simply, you can just kind of count up the protons and the neutrons, and that's how much uh, the atom's nucleus weighs. Well, what about the electron? Well, the electron, they are not part of the nucleus. Remember, they're going around the outside. These protons and neutrons, they're all concentrated in here at the center. And so the electron has a negative charge, and <clears throat> their weight is incredibly small. It's like something like 0 .0005, well, it doesn't really matter what the number is, just kind of think of it as zero. So if you want to know what the nucleus weighs, really you're only interested in the protons and the neutrons. It's kind of like saying, what does a dog weigh? Um, should I count the fleas? Or should I not count the fleas? That's kind of what we're talking about with electrons. They're kind of like the fleas. We don't really care what, how many electrons there are if we're dealing with weight. If we want, want to talk about charge, they're very important. But if you want to talk about weight, electrons are not very important at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to... I say what we're going to do. I say that a lot when I'm on video, don't I? So <clears throat> we need to begin to talk about how these different things interact to tell us about the atom. And so I want to first start out with this proton idea. The proton is one of the most important parts of the atom because the proton determines what kind of atom you have. How many protons you have determines what you are. Specifically, we give that name. It's such an important thing. We give it a, a name. We call the number of protons the atomic number. The atomic number. And we like to give things symbols as well. The symbol that we assign to atomic number is Z. So if you ever saw, like for instance, Z equals 4, that would be saying that we have 4 protons in that nucleus. 
<clears throat> so, what you've got to do is you've got to look at your periodic table. Your periodic table is actually arranged by atomic number. The first atomic number is, of course, 1. And if you look on the periodic table, I'm looking up there because that's the periodic table. I was hoping to have somebody hold the camera, but I couldn't get anyone this time. Maybe next time. But if we hold the, uh, if we look at a periodic table, if you look at hydrogen up there, hydrogen has uh, the number 1 assigned to it. That's because it is atomic number 1. And if you look at sodium, it's 11. If you look at uh, vanadium, it's what, 23, and so on and so forth. But that number, that atomic number that you get right off the table is how many protons that particular kind of atoms has. And if you change that number, you've changed what kind of an atom it is. So <clears throat> that's probably the most important thing to know is that Z number is the number of protons, and that's what you'll find on the table, and that determines what it is. If you have 6, your carbon. If you have 7, your nitrogen. If you have 92, your uranium. So, different atoms can also have different numbers of neutrons as well. For example, let's take an atom that has 6 protons and 6 neutrons. <coughs> well, if it has 6 protons, if we look at our table, we'll see that if it has six protons, that it would be carbon. So, if we have six protons and six neutrons, then that is a carbon atom. And then we could ask the question, well, what does that carbon atom weigh? What is its mass? And that would be, well, it has six protons, so it weighs six AMUs, and then it has six neutrons, another about six. We'll just round that off. Uh, so that's 12. And we don't care how many electrons it has because those don't really weigh anything. So we would say that the weight, the mass of that carbon would be 6 plus 6, 12. So we call this the weight of the atom, the protons plus the neutrons. We give it a name. We call that the mass number. And so for a theoretical carbon atom that has six protons and six neutrons, we would assign it a mass number of 12. So <clears throat> we would call that then carbon 12. Now what if we gave it eight neutrons instead? If it had eight neutrons instead, then now we would have six plus eight and that would be carbon 14. So there's a couple of different ways we can say that. Let me erase this stuff. So um, let's say that we had uh, the filled in dots are neutron or protons, and the hollow dots are protons. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now here's that's a nucleus that has six protons and eight neutrons. So we can find its mass number, it's 6 plus 8, it's 14 protons plus neutrons, it's 14. <clears throat> but it's still carbon because it still has 6 protons. So uh, we could ask the question then, um, so we call that carbon 14. We'll talk about how to denote that in a minute. Now let's take one of these protons and let's pretend that one of those pro or one of these neutrons isn't a neutron, but it's a proton instead. Well, so now it has seven neutrons and seven protons. And so you might say, well, 